Here are 39 ways you can use castor oil. This stuff is amazing. So I recently did a video where I used castor oil for 30 days. I will link it right up here if you wanna check it out. And I shared all of the amazing things this did for my body. I was truly shocked. And so I went down the rabbit hole of castor oil. And today I wanna share all of the other ways all over your entire body you can use this and it could change your life. Now with that said, it definitely did fix some things on my body. And I definitely think this can work wonders. But with that said, we gotta throw out the disclaimer. I'm not saying this is going to cure or prevent any ailments or diseases. You should check with your doctor before you use this. But I am going to link my personal favorite castor oil brands down below in the description box. And I'll also pin them in the comment section. I love this brand, but I also love the Queen of Thrones brand. Um, you can get these on Amazon. This brand is actually the number one best-selling brand on all of Amazon. And then there are a few other uh, brands that I researched uh, that I can also link if anything is sold out because I basically think you just really need it to be 100% organic. It needs to be extra virgin. It should also be hexane free and it should be in a glass dark bottle. So I have 39 ways to get through. So I do have to keep it moving, but I want to cover our entire body going from top to bottom. So I'm going to start with our head and hair. Number one, using it as a scalp treatment to help with dandruff, itchiness, and promote hair growth. So castor oil is is really antibacterial and antifungal. And so it really does help with dandruff. So many people rave about how much faster their hair grows when they use it as a scalp treatment once a week. That's what I would recommend just once a week. It's just, I haven't done that because castor oil is so thick. And so it is a process to use it on your scalp because you have to dilute it with coconut oil or, or carrier oil just to make it not so thick. You know, it could make your hair a little bit greasy if you don't dilute it. So if you do wanna try this, I would again recommend once a week, put it on your hair, let it sit for at least 30 minutes and then wash it out. Next, you could actually use just a little bit on your hair, just a little though. Again, just rub it in your hands, apply it towards the lower thirds and it will add shininess, it'll add moisture it'll just be really good for your hair health. And then the last thing for our head is if you have a headache, this really helps with pain and inflammation and we'll get to other areas of the body. But depending on what kind of headache you have, I would recommend rubbing a little oil on your forehead and your temples and it really could help the headache or actually just get rid of it. But again, I just wanna clarify, it really depends what type of headache you have. I have had a tension headache in the past where this really helped. Then I have had hormonal headaches where this, I think, took the edge off, but it definitely didn't get rid of it. So you could just experiment. Next, we're moving on to our face to include our eyes, lips, and skin. So as I already mentioned, castor oil is great in promoting hair growth. And so it's amazing for our eyelashes and eyebrows. And it's really easy to do this. You can just put a little on your fingers and brush it on your eyelashes, your eyebrows, and you'll start to see a difference in as little as three weeks. Now you can even go the extra mile and and order the uh, mascara tubes and the eyebrow tubes. I can link those down below as well. You can fill that up and then literally just like brush it onto your eyelashes and eyebrows every night. Just do it before bed. Um, or again, you could just use your fingers. I also don't want to scare anybody. Castor oil has never been shown to just promote random hair growing on your skin. I got a lot of comments from people saying, if it promotes hair growth, this is just going to cause me to have hair everywhere. No, it just makes your hair longer and thicker thicker um, where it's supposed to be. Continuing on with the eyes though, if you're somebody that struggles with dry eyes, take some castor oil before bed and rub it on your eyelids. And I really think in, a, in as little as a few days, your dry eye symptoms will dramatically be reduced. But again, just do your own research, talk to your doctor. I'm just sharing this just for you, things for you guys to consider. Um, another eye thing that I keep reading about um, is putting it over your eyelids can really reduce floaters. If you struggle with floaters, it can actually potentially stop the progression of cataracts. And I've even seen reports, and again, this is, I'm not saying this is gonna happen or, or whatever, but I've even seen it can help improve eyesight if continually used. But maybe not, okay? Just, ugh. 
moving on. It can also help with styes on the eye, like you know, those little bumps that are on the eyelid. I believe those are clogged tear ducts. Um, so you can, it can really help with that. And pink eye. And I have a firsthand friend account of this. So my friend Lauren, shout out to her. I told her she should start using castor oil for something completely different. And now she is loving castor oil, but her daughter had pink eye. And she sent me this text like last week. She says, I'm pretty sure it cured Leanna's pink eye in a couple of hours. It's truly amazing stuff. And then she said, um, I'm not 100% sure it was pink eye, but as soon as I put the oil on her eyelids, it completely cleared. Castor oil has also been shown to really reduce the dark circles and bags under your eyes. But while you're at it, you know, putting it under your eyes, you might as well just put it all over your face because that's what I do. It is amazing skincare in general. Like it is just amazing. And you don't have to worry about weird ingredients. It's just a super natural skincare regimen. A little goes a long way and it's just amazing for moisturization, dryness. It improves um, texture. It also helps with collagen production. It helps with fine lines and wrinkles. Oh my goodness, it's just fantastic. And I feel like my skin is so much clearer. And that might also be because it is so antibacterial because of the rinaloic acid that's in this is 92% rinaloic acid. Uh, it really fights off the bacteria that causes acne. It actually goes down really deep into your pores. It absorbs so well and it fights off the acne called, um, I wrote it down, Staphylococcus aureus, which is you know the main I guess, bacteria strain that causes acne. Now, because castor oil is also known to break down bad tissues, it's also amazing for acne scarring. So if you have pits and texture and just like acne scarring from years ago, it will also help to even out your skin and really break that down so that you have a much smoother complexion. You could also just use castor oil with your existing skincare routine because castor oil penetrates so much deeper into like the, the lower, lower layers of your skin. If you pair it with your favorite skincare that was kind of expensive, it will actually actually make those ingredients and, and what that claims to do work better because it's penetrating deeper. You could also mix it with some frankincense oil or essential oils. I love frankincense on the skin. And again, the castor oil helps it work better. You could also put castor oil on your lips as a lip treatment or even just as a gloss. You can just put it on directly with your fingers or you could get one of those lip gloss dispensers. Again, I can link those and just apply it on your lips, you know, throughout the day or even before for bed, it will make them look really shiny and glossy, moisturized and softened. Now we're moving on to the abdomen and just make sure you stay to the end because the last category is going to be the overall body section and there's really good things at the end. But moving to the abdomen, I want to share what you can do as far as putting it in your belly button. So if you think about your belly button, this is like Eastern Ayurvedic thinking. Um, the belly button is what you were attached to with your mother. It provided when you were in your mother's womb, it provided you all of the nutrients to your body. And so if you put something in your belly button, it actually kind of disperses it through your whole body. So you can put castor oil directly into your belly button and also rub it in the abdomen area. And it is amazing for just detoxification in general. Um, but it's it's also great for constipation, IBS symptoms. It's also great for digestion, bloating. And I would say doing this, start off a little bit slow, use it one night, maybe wait a few days, try it again, just to make sure that if there is any detoxification happening, you don't feel really sick from it or anything. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I would just start off a little slow, just in case. Now, if you do have a constipation problem, you could actually take a spoonful of castor oil internally, you just swallow it with a spoon. I mean, people did that back in the day all the time. Like this was like the natural remedy for that. Again, do your own research, see if you wanna do that or not, um, but it just gets things moving. Now, if you are a female and you have hormonal problems, then let me go back to my list here. You could also rub this on your abdomen and it would really help reduce menstrual cramps. It can help um, reduce bloating, regulate hormones. It can help with PCOS and estrogen dominance, and it can actually also help regulate your period if you're just you know completely irregular and I do want to say that is something that I notice with myself I always get a really bad 
hormonal headache every time George comes, which is my monthly friend. And ever since I've been rubbing it on my abdomen, I'm not getting any hormonal headaches anymore. There was one that was like slight, but again, this took the edge off. It, like, it was weird. Like the last few months, like George comes and it's like, I don't feel bad, I feel fine. Castor oil has also been known to dissolve fibroids and ovarian cysts. Again, I'm not saying it's going to, but you could try it if you wanted to, but you would take uh, a castor oil pack. And so I will get to more of this later in the video, but I can link the really good, healthy, just organic cloths that you can pour the castor oil onto. And then you wanna stick it on the side of the cyst or the fibroid every night. And then that will absorb deep, 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 penetrate it and help to dissolve it. I've also seen where people take like a good, healthy panty liner, like an organic panty liner. They will put some castor oil on it, put it in, in the underwear, and it can help with PCOS. It can help with UTIs. It can help with itchiness. It can help with the smell. If you struggle in any of those areas, you could try that. And then the last thing in this area, um, trying to conceive. Again, consult your physician, your doctor. But if you are trying to conceive, there have been so many claims of castor oil really, really helping in that department. Um, again, you would do like a castor oil pack um, before bed down in that you know lower abdomen area. And I keep seeing that it would be best just like the first 14 days or like the first half of your cycle um, leading up to ovulation. Um, and then after, after that time frame, like the last two week wait period, you wouldn't have to do it anymore. And a lot of people have seen success. Moving on to our butt, thighs, and legs. Let's talk about cellulite. If you struggle with cellulite, as I keep saying, castor oil helps break down bad tissues. And so if you have cellulite in those areas, you can apply it and hopefully over time, you'll see it improve. It also really helps the appearance of stretch marks. So if you have stretch marks in that area or really just anywhere in your body, you could also use castor oil there. It can really help reduce the appearance of, or maybe even get rid of spider veins and varicose veins. I've seen a lot of instances from people um, where it's, it's helped in that area as well. Moving to our hands and wrists. So Castor oil can be a great cuticle oil, um, especially in the winter months. I feel like our hands in general just to get really dry, but if you apply it, especially around your cuticles, it helps with that and it also promotes stronger, healthier nails. It can also get rid of warts and calluses. So that could be on your hands or your feet, which I'll get to later because I have a personal story about that with me. Um, but you would apply it directly on the wart or the callus and then maybe put just like a Band-Aid over top to keep it there and fully absorb. If you struggle with carpal tunnel, I have seen where people will put castor oil on their wrists and then a cloth over top with maybe some plastic wrap just to keep it in place um, and doing that every night before bed. And then over time, it really helps carpal tunnel. All right, so we did our hands. Let's move to our feet. So if you have dry cracked heels, you should consider putting castor oil on your dry heels and it will add moisturization. It'll definitely really help with that. And I will also link these heel socks down below. They're amazing because they have like this jelly silicone material on the back. So if you want to add lotion or castor oil, it keeps it from absorbing into the sock and it goes directly into your heels. But it also is great for sleeping because your whole foot and toes can still breathe. I did that and discovered something else. So because castor oil is so good for pain and inflammation, I discovered, because I was putting it on my heels, that it got rid of my plantar fasciitis, which is this injury I guess I had for like nine or 10 months. I was running in the wrong shoes and it was bad for a while. It kind of started to get a little bit better, but regardless, every single morning when I would get out of bed, I would literally like hobble to the bathroom, just my right foot and it, it hurt kind of bad for like the first hour of the day, every day. Well, about three days after putting, um, you know, castor oil on my heels, 
I got out of bed and just walked to the bathroom normally. Like I remember so distinctly just like walking to the bathroom, like what is going on? Like I have no pain and I haven't had it since. Like I, I genuinely feel like this cured. I shouldn't even say the word cured. It really helped my plantar fasciitis, okay? So then I was like, let me try it on my foot callus. So I already told the story in another video, but just long story short, I put um, some castor oil uh, on my like pinky toe callus that I developed from a bad pair of shoes like 15 years ago. And within one week, I, I would say it was like, 70% gone. It definitely gets rid of calluses. Again, you just put it a little bit on the area, put a Band-Aid over top, do it for like a week or two, you're good to go. Now, luckily I don't struggle with uh, this, but if you have athlete's foot or uh, nail fungus, uh, because this is so antibacterial and antifungal, uh, if you put it directly on that, it can really clear that up as well. If you struggle with insomnia or you have trouble sleeping, people also love to put this on the very bottoms of their feet before bed. And the bottoms of your feet have so many, again, like pathways and it just like really uh, absorbs well into your entire body. So again, that's another way you can use this to detoxify, but there've been so many claims it also really helps people sleep. Now I'm not saying it's just gonna instantly make you fall asleep, I just think it it will make you have a deeper, more restful sleep. All right, now we're getting into the really good stuff, what it can do for your overall body, starting with lymphatic drainage. So you can apply this on your neck, you can apply it under your armpits, anywhere there's lymph nodes, it really helps with, uh, again, detoxification, but more specifically, lymphatic drainage. Now, because castor oil is so good for pain and inflammation, it's really good for muscle aches and soreness. So that could be because of of an actual injury, or just you worked out really hard and you're sore and you wanna apply castor oil to help with that. But Josh did injure his knee and his shoulder, and so he really likes to put castor oil in those areas to again help with pain and inflammation, and then just to kind of piggyback off of that, but my assistant Katie told me to tell this story. So she had Lyme disease, and the pain really went to her joints. Um, so the long-term Lyme can really go to your joints and cause a lot of inflammation, and so so she would actually put castor oil on a cloth, wrap it around her knee, um, then put saran wrap over top just to keep it in place and then put a heating pad. And again, it would go into the joints and really help with those symptoms. So if, if you have you know sore joints in your elbows, knees, really anywhere in your hands, um, arthritis, that's another thing. Let's just go to that. If you have arthritis in your hands or anywhere on your body, try castor oil. Now, I kind of already touched on this briefly, but again, just for your body in general, castor oil can help dissolve any cysts, lumps, or bumps in your body. I'm gonna be careful about how I say things so you guys can use your own imagination and read even just some of the comments in my other video. I'm sure in this video, there's gonna be so many comments from people just saying amazing things about what this has done. So I encourage you guys to read the comments, but use the the, uh, the the castor oil packs. Again, I will link really good, healthy cloth that you can put the castor oil on, apply it to whatever area you have the lump, bump, or cyst. And I shouted out my mom before, she did this for a spot on her body and it really worked. If you have a regular, like healthy, flat mole, you can also use castor oil and baking soda. You can mix that together and create a paste and put it over the mole and then put a Band-Aid over top of it. Use it for a couple weeks like that and it will literally get rid of the mole. But I just wanna be cautious with that because if any mole is like changing in size or color, like I don't be, I don't know. In a way I'm like, just leave your mole. Like who cares? Like don't, don't do that. But it, I mean, it, it can work. It also really helps with uh, heel wounding and tissue regrowth. So if you scrape your knee or there's a scratch, like you could actually use this and then, you know, put a bandage over top. I've also read so many reports of it helping eczema. So if you struggle with eczema, you know, somewhere on your body, um, I'm sure that can be so difficult, but you could try castor oil for a while just to see if that improves. I really think it could. It could also help with sunburn. If you stay outside too long, you got a bad sunburn, put some castor oil directly on your skin. It adds moisturization. It helps to repair the damaged tissues. You could just use straight castor oil or you could mix it with aloe vera gel or coconut oil. It'll actually make those, uh, 
absorb even deeper and it's just so good. So anyway, that's 39 ways guys. There are so many more ways too. I just didn't want to overwhelm you, but everything that I mentioned in this video, I will have linked down below. I'll also pin them in the comment section, but while you're down there in the comment section, read all of the comments because I guarantee you there's so many amazing things that this has helped others with. Just read through them. If you know something that this helped you with, put it in the comment section. Please consider subscribing if you're new and I will see you in my next video. Bye.